Baseball is 60 feet. Softball is 46 feet pitching wise. Slow pitch, you got to throw it high arc it. And fast pitch, as long as you stayed on the rubber, you could throw it, throw it as hard as you could. Under him. That was a windmill throw. Yeah, on weekends we play uh, all Mexican teams, over 20 teams per weekend. For the past century, Kansas City has been home to a thriving Mexican-American population. These communities are bonded by their culture, their heritage, and by the phenomenon known as fast-pitch softball. The early 20th century saw a major influx of Mexican migration into the United States. Special allowances had been made for Mexican immigrants in order to bolster the U.S. labor force, which had dwindled due to its involvement in World War I. Mexico was in the midst of their own war, the Mexican Revolution. In this period, over one million Mexicans migrated to the United States, seeking work and sometimes refuge from the revolution. My mom told us one time when we were growing up, she used to tell us a lot of stories about when she, you know, in Mexico. When the revolution broke out, she, they used to race horses, you know, and they came in and took the land away from my, from my mom and my grandma, you know, them. So she, she and my grandma, they came by, the, by themselves. My father was born in Mexico City. Uh, it is said that uh, he was born atop of a boxcar, leaving the Mexican Revolution, coming to the United States. Many immigrants to Kansas City settled in the communities of Argentine, Armadale, the west side of Kansas City, Missouri, and the West Bottoms. My dad came from uh, La Barca, Jalisco. He gravitated to Detroit, Michigan for a little while to work. Then he came down here to the bottoms and worked for the armor packing house. The only, the only jobs, we, we couldn't get any skilled work, you know, because the only jobs we could get was either the hotels or the railroad or the packing houses. That's the only jobs we, we know our people could get. For these families, life was often fraught with discrimination. What school did you go to? Claire Barton, like I told you, they sent us over there to the damn cornfields. You know, because, like I said, we were what we were. They were barred from neighborhoods, restaurants, recreational services, and veterans clubs. As a result, they were forced to form their own. They had to have their own leagues because it was segregated. They couldn't play in the, the other leagues with the whites. Um, so they really fought for that. The reason that the, the Argentine Eagles for 213 started because uh, one evening there was about 12 or 15 of us guys went down there, veterans, and uh, John Joe Salazar, he got up, he said, Mr. Commander, we're veterans, we're right here in Argentina, we come and see if we can we like to join the post. And the first thing, uh, I'll never forget this, the first thing that, that commander said, we don't like, we don't allow Mexicans in this post. Thank you, and we walked out. So we, at one of our meetings, we decided, that, why don't we just have form our own? The rest is history. Mm -hmm. 11 is no longer here, and we're still going strong. Through these hardships, one enduring source of happiness was baseball. Sports of all kinds brought the Mexican-American community together. What have you enjoyed most about the game. Well, I used to play all of the for different teams. And they used me because I could hit the ball harder than anybody else. We played, I played against Maggie for a couple of games. And Maggie was one of the best ball players that, like I said, he could have had a major league. Best thrower, best hitter. You name it, he had an arm. My dad had a chance to play for St. Louis Cardinals. He was scouted by them. Uh, he was also, the family ties were so thick with him because he was the eldest. They had to provide for their brothers and sisters. My dad could have been a 
heck of a ball player as far he's still a heck of a ball player but he chose to maintain that for his family as the years went by after world war ii softball got stronger they were playing more softball than baseball fast pitch softball rose to prominence in the 1950s it was a shorter game with a larger ball and a smaller infield it was perfect for veterans returning from war and for former baseball players who wanted to continue playing competitive sports well the oldest ones that i know of is the aztecas uh, they derived their name from an uh, Indian tribe that uh, lived in Mexico. My brother was playing on that team and I had other friends that were playing on that team. So I went ahead and I joined the Azteca team and then I played with them till, until I retired. Both through 13, they got together since they all, all played sports, every one of those guys. And so they came up with the name Origin Evils. My uncle Carlos Montes, he's the one I just started. I guess they just figured they, they wouldn't all play together. They, I think they just wanted to play together. You know what, we thought, we got a lot of guys that play with us that are our age, so we can play with these guys. We can, let's make our own team help. We can, and that's what we did. We didn't know what to name ourselves because there was a lot of family, a lot of friends. We were going to name it La Familia, but we got voted down, so we decided on the Eagles because we're all friends. Well, they they started playing with the Eagles, and then as you know, my brother were all getting together. They decided to form their own team, and they decided to call themselves the Indios because that's the our hometown team was named the Indios, you know from. Uh, Juarez, so that's where we got our name. Mexican-American fast-pitch tournaments were cropping up all across Kansas and the Midwest. Tournaments would host as many as 20 teams with hundreds of spectators in attendance. In the 1970s and 80s, fast-pitch was in its heyday. Esto pasó en Kansas City. El año 67 Chanu, Topeka, Emporia, Wichita, I mean, everybody had a softball team. And they would have like softball tournaments and they were Mexican tournaments. We used to have like 20 some teams at tournaments, Mexican teams. The only form of entertainment would be to go out to the ballpark and watch these people play ball that you knew. It was more like a fiesta type because you had all these Mexican American people and they would have a dance um, for you at nighttime. The stands used to be full. Yeah, we had a lot with the family. Yeah. And then our friends, you know. Yeah. Tell them about Tahika. A lot of cheering and screaming. <laughs> I remember when we used to, hey, Blanco's going to strike out. I've got $5. Blanco would strike this guy out. Well, I bet you he can strike him out, you know, and that, that was from one stand to the other. Competition. I love competition, and they t tell me I wouldn't do it, I'd buy it. The 4th of July tournament in Newton, Kansas is the oldest Mexican-American fast-pitch tournament in the United States. In 2015, it celebrated its 67th year. And like I said, my dad started, they had four teams, and I was the bat boy. And in 48, I was seven. So that was in Newton, Kansas. Yeah, so I've been to every single 4th of July tournament. For 69 years coming yeah, up. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't missed one. I mean, that was, you know, I, you know, my wife, my mom knew this and my wife knows this. That, I mean, that, you know, the 4th of July, we're not, we're not going anywhere. We're in Newton, you know. I mean, that's just the way it is. <laughs> yeah, the Newton tournament, for them, their major event is that softball tournament. So everything evolves around it, and so they really make you feel special. For the ramparts we watched, 
He said he played 40 years. 40 years. There's a picture. Congratulations. We're going to give out four $500 scholarships. Bless our family. Bless this family reunion. Tournaments throughout Kansas and the Midwest continue to draw surviving teams such as the Kansas City Angels, Kansas City Indios, State Line Locos, Newton Max, Los Bonillas de Salina, Emporia Casa Ramos, Kansas City Banditos, Hutchinson Angels, and the Wichita Weezers. These teams remain vibrant and endure to this very day. And this one was uh, like a tournament in Missouri. They call it, uh, it's the Angels Memorial Day uh, tournament. And uh, they inducted my nephew. Uh, I can't say. Yeah, he had cancer and they inducted him in the Hall of Fame just before, you know, he passed away. Yeah. Do you remember what year that was in? Uh, 2012, in July 2012, when he passed away. Actually, he passed away right when we was having our, our annual tournament in July. This award will be given to the person who best portrays the characteristics Duty had on and off the softball field. He played this game with much class, much respect. To Mario Escobar. Softball, softball, community as well. You know, so, so it, it's an honor, to, you know, to get this. played up till I was about almost 60 years old and then I just used to get out there just and we were short and we were in forfeit so I'd get out there you know in fact me and Waxy Hernandez he was running the Amigos he'd come down to to uh, Shawnee Park and in the last part of the, the league when it was maybe the last game they didn't have enough guys so they went forfeit so Waxy would play and I would play we were the oldest guys we'd get out there and play you know we were always subject to get clobbered sometimes because we'd collide with players, you know, and uh, we could get hurt because these young guys were, you know, they were younger and faster, and they ran into us old timers. They they put us out of the commission, you know. So <laughs> me and him, we'd only play one game a year, and that would be the last game of the year. And I would say, yeah, it looks like it's the last game of the year. I retired from the Meagles when my father passed. We were on our way to San Antonio. We were getting ready to go and he had a stroke and, you know, we didn't know what to do. Um, my brothers and us, we, we had a talk with my father and, you know, he, he wanted us to go. But we were against it because my mom felt like we should be here, you know, in case uh, he needed something. But he, on his deathbed, he still wanted us to go. He said he'll be here until Monday, which I will never forget. He goes, you guys just go and play in that one more time. But we didn't because of my mother's wishes. And uh, so he passed that following Tuesday. And, you know, uh, that was the end of Amigos because nobody, we wanted to go out on top. 
and we did go out on top. And they honored him by naming a ballpark after him because he began after he could not play, he started working with kids. And you know what, it was an honor for the city to give him back something. When they dedicated the uh, Waxy Hernandez Field over in Penn Valley Park, uh, can you tell us about that ceremony and what it meant to you? Oh, it, it uh... Just thrilled. Yeah. When they dedicated, I was so proud because he was bringing up to youngsters. It made me proud because you know I got a chance to see my father play, and I got a chance to see him work with kids, and I wanted to continue in his footsteps. And that's one of the reasons that I'm doing this, what I do now. Right now, I'm the athletic director for Guadalupe Center. I develop uh, basketball leagues. We start from ages four all the way up to 14 years old. Uh, we provide service basketball leagues, and we send them out to tournaments. Uh, we also do, coming up now in, in the spring, we're gonna develop our baseball program, which now we're into machine pitch, t-ball, and regular baseball. Fast pitch softball is alive and well among many Mexican-American families. It lives in the memories of those who played during its heyday and through the efforts by former players and their families to keep the game alive for the benefit of future Mexican-American players. The Guadalupe Centers of Kansas City, Missouri continues its long history of developing young Mexican-American ball players. There are efforts by the Argentine Eagles to renovate the Eagles Nest Field and offer opportunities for young Mexican Americans to hone their skills. This field hasn't been used in over 20 years and uh, now's the time for us to do something about it and, and, um, and fix it up and we are going to do that this year in August. This is, the, this is the backstop. This backstop has been here for many years and we don't want to do, do anything to it only because it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like a landmark for us, for the community. We're gonna go ahead and uh, level this whole field out, take all the brush out so that we can put new fencing up, and we'll be ready for next year for um, little kids' uh, hardball, and um, probably have some softball leagues here too, also. This is something that's, uh, that I grew up with, playing ball, underhand fast pitch, and this is where I started. And, uh, and it'll be great to, to get it going again, to keep the tradition up for the community. So we're, we're doing it all, we're getting bigger and bigger. So, you know, the opportunity is here for these kids and, and that's what I want to give back, you know, uh, open to some of these doors with some of these kids to really get active and showcase their talents. I used to think there was no greater high than playing the game until you get into teaching, okay? I was involved with my kids. Uh, I became uh, the manager and the coach. We'll never forget the dedication and interest shown by so many of my instructors. The education I received truly has given me the confidence and knowledge that I needed to become a better person in life. You know, in athletics, I mean, you mimic a lot of life. The things that you go through, the perseverance and the other kinds of things like that are the things that you need and the skills like that that you need there to persevere in their life because that's how life is. To my parents, Gilbert and Pat Castro, and my brother, Jesse Castro, I would like to share this award with all of you. Okay. There you go. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. Okay. Straighten your feet up. All right, here we go. Oh. Hey. <laughs> My mom um, did a lot with the kids. We followed her a lot too to a lot of her ball games because she played underhand fast pitch. She was um, she played second base. That was her spot. That's where she played. So, yeah, she's played sports all her life, and that's where I follow uh, most of my sports is through my mom. 
Because I was playing ball, my boys could throw a ball before they could crawl. I mean, before they could walk. I mean, that's just where that's just where we are of our life. That's just part of our life. The most memorable games, game and tournament, would be when uh, my sons. I had three of them playing with us for with me in the Newton Mexican tournament. It was the biggest tournament in Kansas, and. My sons and I, all three of them, that's the first time that's ever happened. We made the all-star team and I was the most valuable player. And that was... That still is a big part of my life. I got to play with my kids. Andre's my son. Uh, we met actually through Fast Pitch at uh, Newton's 4th of July tournament. And uh, I've been playing since I was 15. I grew up watching my uncles and my dad play all the time. You know, one of the kids running around the ballpark. Well, I got into it because I grew up on the ball field. My dad played for years. My, uh, our family had a team back in Topeka. I grew up watching all their uncles and cousins and my dad play. Most kids, they grew up wanting to play major leagues and everything. I wanted to grow up and play on the family team. So. Oh my gosh, you know. Growing up and being a part of that team, I thought they were all my brothers. When I found out that they were not my actual brothers and they had different moms and dads, oh my gosh, that threw me for a loop. That took a minute. Because I was like, huh, but you treat me like I'm your sister, you know, but I'm not, you know, and it, it quickly became, it didn't matter, you know. We'd have rivals with our 25th Street Chicano brothers. They'd come over here and play, and then we'd go over there and play on the 25th Street. But this was our paradise here, it was fun. We didn't know nothing different or how bad or how poor we were. We just enjoyed life. Playing sports mostly and uh, maintaining this property here, keeping the grass cut for our fields. And we played it almost every day. We loved it because it was the camaraderie of the kids we grew up with, we got to know them, and we all figured out we were all in the same boat. So that really united us to be a, a strong uh, neighborhood. A lot of my best friends are guys I played against. You know, not so much my teammates, but I mean, they're my friends. But you know, you earn the respect of other, of, of other players, and a lot of my good friends are guys I played against. Back then when we played, uh... We'd argue on the ball field, but after the game, we all drank together, socialized. That's, that, back then when we were coming, that's what kept softball competitive, because we'd argue in the ball field, but friends after it. Wives, kids, everything, we would all socialize. I like the interview more even more all the way from Austin, Texas. Yeah. We're that's like, that's we're true. Like, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Have you seen the Yellow Big Road right because I think for me, it was more than a sport. Uh, it was more than, the tournaments were more than just gatherings. Uh, uh, you know, they were family reunions. Uh, they, they were bringing old players back together again. It was an opportunity to see one another again. Uh, and it was more than just playing softball. And I know today and, that I can go anywhere in those communities that I've said and have a place to stay tonight, something to eat tonight, and if I was down on my luck and I needed some money, I'd have that as well, just because of playing fast pitch softball. The annual tournament games provided occasions for Mexican-American families to forge lasting friendships, the camaraderie, the competition, and the pure joy of seeing family, la familia, and friends in a fiesta-like atmosphere making lasting memories. Come on, Tony! Hey, how you guys doing? It sounds like another old guy just got here. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, guys. Center, Aaron's rent to own. So please do business with these sponsors that help us put on the tournament. Now batting Arthur Diaz. Arthur Diaz. Yeah. 
Well, they may be old, but they still got their tricks. We play three nights a week. I think they're going to connect that. They're going to connect that. Coco! You're going to come, do you? I come here last year, got a hit. I hope I get a hit today. Borrachita me voy Para olvidarte No te preocupes Yo te quiero a ti Pero borrachita me voy para la capital va a entregar mi al patrón que me mando llamar desde ayer borrachita me voy paro no te preocupes, yo te quiero a ti, pero borrachita me voy para la capital, para entregarme al patrón. Que me mando llamar desde ayer.